bookaholics and welcome back to another video. Today I am bringing you another weekly update. Yes, I look rough as nails and this is the best you're getting. Okay, it's just, it's not getting any better than this. So sorry, but not that sorry. It's like 40 degrees at the moment in Southern Spain. So I'm not doing too good. Anyway, so let's get into the books that I have read. So I'm going to start out with my digital book and I have read The Daughter of the Ice. And this is a book that was sent to me for review by the author and I enjoyed it. I don't have like particularly like really strong feelings for it. It's not one that like really, really hooked me, but it's definitely one that was a decently solid debut and I would be interested in continuing the series like it's not like a oh my god I need the sequel yesterday but it's also uh interesting enough and enthralling enough that I would happily consider continuing on with the series I gave it a solid four stars it's an interesting premise uh it's a a goddess uh, of like death has awoken and is wreaking havoc and we have this uh retired mercenary who's got himself a gang together to go and like take down this foe and um yeah it was an interesting enough story there were definitely elements that rang very debut and uh, a little bit self publishy so you know I'm sure that a couple uh, more books in the author will definitely have ironed those out and they'll be really really solid installments so for the most part decent read had a good time would recommend if the premise sounds interesting to you if you like the whole like old crotchety man needs to come out of retirement kind of vibe like it definitely holds true to that it has decent uh execution of that so good book great debut would recommend if it sounds interesting to you moving into the only physical book that i have actually finished and read in its entirety this week and that is scythe by neil schusterman this wasn't even on my planned reading for this this week uh but i will let you know why? So first off, I enjoyed Scythe. Again, I don't connect really with YA as much as I used to. And this is one of those that I think I went into thinking that it would feel less YA than your usual YA. Again, no fault with YA. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. And that's why I'm no longer the target audience. That's fine. I'm a mother of four. I've been married for eight years. I can't quite relate to the angst that comes in YA anymore. That's fine. We grow. We move. And um, I had heard a lot of people cite this as one that is like, oh, if you if you don't normally read YA, you normally read adult, this one would still work for you. I kind of disagree with that sentiment uh, just because it gets pitched so much that it made me think that it would be like an adult book, but with, you know, uh, more digestible themes and a more accessible writing style. The way that it gets pitched a lot. And I mean a lot. Uh, and that wasn't really the case. It read like a very intelligent YA. And I think that statements like that sometimes undermine YA. It's like, this reads like YA. Anyone who has read this and be like, oh, this doesn't read like YA because it's not got a love triangle in it. It's like, you're undermining YA. The content in here was YA. It's, it's some of the best uh, content of YA in terms of it being intrinsically YA and there not being any crossover value with adult or less crossover value with adult literature but it's it's good YA but I'm really tired of people being like oh this doesn't have really angsty romance in the love triangle in the first five pages therefore it doesn't read like YA it's like no no this reads like YA if you say otherwise you're probably reading the wrong YA we've moved on since Stephanie Mayer just saying just saying just putting that out there anyway the reason, however, that I read Scythe is because I put down my other book. Now, before I say this, this hurts me more than it will ever hurt you, okay? I'm just saying this now, this hurts a lot. I think I'm going to DNF the Soldier's Son trilogy by Robin Hobb. Robin Hobb, I thought, was my favorite author. Turns out it just might be that Realm of the Elderlings is my favourite series, but Robin Hobb might not be my favourite author, which is a devastating realisation. But I, I didn't I didn't have a good time with book one. I, I didn't enjoy 
the first book, I, I struggled with it a lot and I thought, okay, but we're setting up a lot of difficult themes, a lot of problematic elements, so then those can get ironed out over the course of the next couple of books. However, this first, I didn't even get halfway. I am on page 316 out of 818, I think it is. It, it just continued more problematic elements. So in the first one we had, you know, like, uh, racism, we had bigotry, we had uh, misogyny to an extent, we had colonialism, we had a lot of like problematic content that this character is uh, questioning but adhering to in the, in the course of that book. In this one we also get what is essentially internalized fat phobia, we have uh, questionable mental health representation in my opinion, and we have a lot of of underlying themes that I can't go into because of spoilers because some of you may want to read this still uh, that for me felt like oh we're just continuing to push him further and further into asshole them okay fantastic and the whole time we have the protagonist completely self-pitying his way through all of this so it's absolutely exhausting and I just, I, do, I don't have time for it. I don't have the energy and I don't have the time for it anymore. And I, I've decided that I can't, I can't, I keep not reading. I've read one book this week because I finally gave up on this one. I've barely been reading this week. I, you know, I was reading Daughter of the Ice because I was reading it digitally. So whenever I was just scrolling my phone, I'd be like, nope, get off and go read your ebook, which was easier. But I would literally have like not read anything this month if I just kept trying to persevere through this series because it just keeps I keep not wanting to pick it up and I'm the kind of I'm a bit monogamous in my reading I'm like okay I can have an audiobook a physical book and a and a um a digital book and I've got other physical books on the go so it's like I can't ha open another one so I'll just keep pushing through this one and and I kept not wanting to do it it might be a soft DNF, I might return to it. I'm gonna leave my bookmark in and I'll see how the current takes me. But at the minute I'm not I'm not doing too good with these. So they are yeah. Well we'll see. Quickly nipping in here to say that I've only just remembered that I did actually technically finish Sister Song this week. I read most of it on Sunday, but I did in fact read the like last 100 pages but then of course my update went up on Sunday so I have an update to do on my thoughts on sister song at all so nipping in here uh randomly interjecting into the video I have no idea where I'm putting this clip but I am uh really really happy to have read this one aside from Outlaw Mage this is so far the best book that I've read this month it was a very interesting take on the both the story of the two our sisters it was an interesting take on feminism on womanhood it was um a compelling story in a lot of senses i think that i had um a few issues that I still need to iron out. I need to like really think up a really concise review. I might do a dedicated review for this one. Um, or I will wait and I will do my, the same as I did last time where it's like, you know, the first six, the next six books that I'm reading for my like standalones challenge. Uh, I will do a, a more concise review of this. Hopefully by the time my July wrap up comes around, I'll be able to say more. I've given this four stars. Like it's a good book. And I, I really enjoyed the themes that it was addressing. I did have a couple of issues with some of the depictions of um, English heritage um, and history. But it's, it's fantasy, it's got magic in it, it's fictional. So once I overcame that, once my history nerd side was a bit like, huh, um, I kind of overcame that. I think my biggest problem with this, without getting into spoilers, is potentially the villain. Um, just because it did seem like you had one person embodying an entire system and that never works for me because the the thing with systems is the reason that they seem like such an unsurmountable challenge such a uh, incredible issue is because it is such an expansive web of interlinking problems and oppressive behaviors um while if you just pin it on one person, you just technically need to find, you know, get enough people together to remove this person from their position of power. 
and your problems are sort of resolved. So the fact that it was pinned on this one person meant that I then felt like there could be a resolution. Um, and then it kind of minimized the stakes a bit for me in that sense. So I did really enjoy this book. I have a couple of problems with it, but it was really, really good story. Really glad to have read it. Really, really enjoy the themes that were addressed. We have trans representation front and center in this story, in a mythology retelling, well, a legend retelling, which is absolutely fantastic. Here for it. Loved the complexities of the, protag the protagonists at large, the representation of women as, you know, very unique individuals, but with a shared, uh, a, sh a shared womanhood. You know the 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 shared issues that you experience through womanhood, uh, while simultaneously being uh, individual people. I think was addressed really really well. I think this could have potentially been a favorite book if it won for the slightly annoying. Uh, villain and character that we have in here so yeah really good book would highly recommend more to come on this one i will be talking about this one more back to your regularly scheduled program with uh books that i am continuing through i am now halfway through uh, donde los árboles cantan again this is another one that is very quintessentially ya so it's very atmospheric it's very sweet it's enjoyable it's not necessarily going to be a new favourite. It's not one that I'm like dying to pick up. It's like, ah, Spanish Wednesdays, so I'll pick up a Spanish book. And I think if I weren't doing Spanish Wednesdays, I think I'd potentially forget that I am reading this if I weren't like keeping track of my reading and, oh, it's Wednesday, I need to read a Spanish book. Uh, so, you know, it's not the most memorable. It's not necessarily like, yeah, thank God I'm reading this. But it's it's a fun time when I do pick it up. Like, I don't hate picking it up, not like freaking Robin Hood books. But it's, you know, it's, 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 it's not going to be a new favourite by a long shot. Today's reading plan is I'm going to continue with my read of Malice as I am doing the uh, joining the read along over on the Brothers Gwyn channel. They're going to do a live show apparently with like all the spoilers, which is fantastic. So I need to read my next section, which is the next like 150 pages. I want to tab it up like I've been doing so that then these are things that potentially in the live show, they're things I can ask questions about. I am thinking about potentially not only doing my usual like in each chunk putting a post-it note and writing down thoughts at the very very end I am considering also having a whole separate post-it note where I write down like a lot of questions um, about people's thoughts and feelings and interpretations and given that the live show is hosted by his sons there is the chance that he will they will have more insight into the creation of the world and the characters as well like where he gets inspirations and stuff from which is always something that I'm really fascinated in uh, so I am excited about that so yeah I, I want to keep tabbing and I'm keep tabbing a lot of like cultural and, and world building stuff instead of just like plot points that I know are going to get brought up anyway so we'll see how that goes when I have finished my chunk of malice next week's priority is going to be I'm going to be starting the age of madness which I am now terrified for because my two if you look at my top uh, 10 favorite fantasy series of all time at the top I think in third place I have Jabba Crombie and in first place I have Robin Hobb so I had heard average things about a couple of installments in the Age of Madness series so it was always already one I was a bit worried about but I'm all the more concerned now that I am literally capable of bringing myself to DNF Robin Hobb so I don't know I have concerns but I am hoping that I will enjoy this so yeah start Age of Madness and then just see how far into the Age of Madness I can go basically but yeah that's that's everything so you know I'm continuing two books I'm DNFing a book I'm potentially starting not only a book but an entire trilogy and I have read in its entirety one book <laughs> which yeah says an awful lot about how like Robin Hobb has broken me this week this month because like even the previous book it's like okay I will push myself through it because I'm interested in the outcome like I'm interested in what happens you know at the end but getting 300 pages in and being like I keep not wanting to pick this up and I've got 500 pages of this book to go 
before we get into how how big's the last book? 760 extra pages of the third book. I just I don't I don't think I can do it, gang. I just I don't think I can. Um maybe if I chip away at it slowly, it will destroy my soul a bit less, but I definitely can't have it as my priority read. And I don't think it would suit me reading it alongside Jabba Crombie. So I might just need to wait until like I'm not really reading much fantasy. And I fancy a bit of fantasy, but okay, just read a couple of Robert Hogg chapters, which will take you six hours, apparently. So yeah, that's that's where I'm at. That's what I'm reading. That's what I've finished. Uh, yeah, July is definitely not treating me as well. It's interesting because in June, I read some absolutely incredible books. And then in July, I started it with, you know, a new favourite. I started it with Outlaw Maid, which is a new favourite, irrefutably. I've read Sister Song, which I really enjoyed. And now I'm kind of just in this weird limbo of, oh, everything is downhill from here. Because literally on the TBR now I have left is the Joe Crumbie trilogy, which could be hit or miss. And I, I have a YA and my parents have read Kiss and Tell and they both loved the Darius books and like they liked this one but they didn't like it anywhere near as much as the Darius books. So now I'm like, okay. So the reason I picked this up is because it's Ad Corum and it's not as good as the reason that I love Ad Corum. So it's just like, I'm not really looking forward to any of my reads, which is just really sad. So yeah. July is not going so well for me. Maybe, maybe Age of Madness will turn my mouth around. Let's hope, huh? But yeah, that is all for me for today. So thank you ever so much for watching. I hope that I haven't depressed you too much. <laughs> That's the best thing I could say about this video. Uh, but yeah, uh, I will hopefully catch you in another one soon. Let me know how July is treating you so far. Let me know what your best read of the first half of the month has been. And yeah, I will chat to you later. Bye.